Learn me for this, but Joust and Duel going to be seeing some changes. Learn me, walk us through. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait! wait. Everybody just calm down! What's going on, everyone? So if you haven't heard, in the latest balance patch, Irez has introduced some huge changes that are coming to Joust soon. And so the purpose of this video is to show all of the changes they're implementing, while also pointing out how this will most likely affect the Joust meta. Also, this video is going to be structured pretty straightforward by going down the list of all the changes to make it easily digestible for you guys. So with that out of the way, let's hop right into it. So we're going to start off small with some minor changes that are coming. So starting off this list, we have a change to the setup time before the game fully begins, where now they're changing it from 45 to 60 seconds. Now I don't know about you, but for me, this has to be one of the most significant and great changes they've made to Joust. I can't tell you how many times I've had to rush buying items to try and make it to the first buff, especially if I'm thinking about item choices. So to me, this is a fantastic buff, and I'm really glad they finally upped the time limit. Next up, we have a small increase in the amount of gold received passively, where now it's 7 gold per second as opposed to the 6 gold it was before. Now this may not seem like much, as it's only 1 gold, but over time this should make for a faster paced game by allowing you to get items online a lot faster, which also allows for late game to come a lot sooner. Now moving on to some more impactful changes, Joust will no longer be on the Jade Dragon map, where now it will be moving back to the Season 3 Chinese map, while the Duel map will now take over the Jade Dragon map. Now they've been recently changing the maps around between Joust and Duel, and overall it was pretty enjoyable, but I think they may have made a mistake this time. Now, the main difference between both maps is how big they are. The J Dragon map has a pretty big jungle as far as Joust is concerned, where the Chinese map is pretty narrow. And because of that, I think having a bigger map suits Joust more as it's holding 6 players at a time, and vice versa with Duel, which holds 2 players at a time. I think there's too much farm and space to adequately hold Duel on the J Dragon map, and I think it's way too small with not enough farm to adequately hold Joust on the Chinese map. I'm not entirely sure why they're changing maps, especially seeing as it wasn't that long ago that they swapped maps. But nonetheless, seeing as we were returning to this map, if any of you guys haven't played here before, the overall idea of how to play on this map is pretty much the same as you would on the J Dragon map. Some key differences I can highlight in this map though, is that there isn't a speed buff, there are less XP camps, and red buff spawns at the beginning of the match. And now what this means is that there are usually going to be more invades on your blue buff as there isn't a lot of farm on the map, whereas before in the J Dragon map, blue buffs weren't as popular. But this is going to be one thing you're going to want to pay attention to while you're on this map. So let's move on to the star differences between both maps. In this map, the Chinese map, both teams for the most part make their way over to red and try to secure red buff. From there, you either clear or have already cleared your wave and make your way over to your blue buff and then back to wave, which pretty much ends the start. However, depending on how badly or not you win red buff trade, you can make your way over to the enemy's blue and steal it, which easily starts a big snowball effect. Other than that, everything else is pretty much copy and paste in terms of joust. Moving on, but still on the topic of the map, they're changing the neutral XP camp adjacent to the bull demon king into a purple buff which is very similar to the conquest purple buff. And this buff gives you 15% attack speed and protection shred up to 6% plus 2% of power for physical gods or 1% of power for magical gods. With this new purple buff being substituted for the XP camp, this innately makes this part of the map even more contentious, very similar to how the red buff is. And the main reason for why this part of the map is going to be more contentious is due to the priority of the gold and XP being higher for killing this buff but also, this is a very good and significant buff for your ADC, if you have one. Another thing to know is that with this introduction of this buff, this makes ADCs by default better in Joust, and this is a very intentional thing that they did to try and disrupt the double tank meta. And trust me, this double tank meta has been plaguing Joust since its inception. Following suit, we have a change to blue buff, where now it gives you and your teammates within 55 units, 15 MP5, with a passive giving you 4% of missing mana back when hitting an enemy god. Now this is a pretty big change to what it was previously, and the idea behind this is to attempt a counterbalance to the MP5 you got with your starter items, seeing as they're no longer here, which we'll be talking about shortly. 
However, I don't think the changes are going to do all too much outside of the person holding the buff, but we will just have to see how much of an impact blue buff will have. And then the last thing involving buffs and XP camps, we have some changes to the amount of gold and XP minions and buff camps give. And without getting too far in depth with the changes, minions are getting buffed health, power, and protections similar to how conquest minions feel, and their XP and gold are slightly increasing. More importantly though, buff camps are reducing their XP and gold amounts significantly, essentially in half. And so the minion XP and gold should counterbalance the decrease with the buff camps. However, this means early game levels might be stunted as you're getting half the amount of XP you're normally getting. So we're going to need to pay attention to how this actually plays out, as I think this is going to be very important early game. Following that, there are some spicy changes to towers and phoenixes, which now have protection shred to gods that are hit by them that last for 3 seconds. Where each shot taken applies an 8% physical and 6% magical shred, stacking up to 3 times. And this reaches up to 24% physical protection shred and 18% magical protection shred, which is pretty ridiculous. And on top of that, towers now have 235 power. And this is pretty crazy as this is another attempt at making the double tank meta that much worse. So now, any tank that tries to siege a tower or phoenix is going to get extremely punished by getting demolished by the tower's new damage on top of the added percent pen applied to them. They more or less made towers and phoenixes overpowered, and to be fair, they weren't really much of a threat in joust, and so a buff was needed but I'm not sure this big of a buff was. And because of this, I'm assuming we are going to be in a tower slash phoenix meta where bull demon will be prioritized more than ever, especially early game now. And gods and items that can take advantage of towers like Fenrir and Atlas, for example, are going to be even stronger. One thing to note, however, with the increase in protection shred and base damage to towers, this automatically makes Emperor's armor that much better. And this is in terms of any tank and any team comp, but specifically in the two tank team comp, as if you were trying to dive without it, you're going to get lit up pretty quickly. And this also applies to your team defending, where if you're getting sieged by an enemy team, with the buffs to towers as well as emp armor on your tank, this makes tower diving that much harder. Although one caveat I need to add to all of this is that not being able to tower dive as effectively can make the pacing of the game feel very sluggish. Even before this patch, I've heard and dealt with games where the enemy team hides under tower until like 20 minutes in, waiting for one team fight that ultimately wins the game. So although they're trying to tackle the tower diving meta within Joust, this is going to definitely amplify the stalemate aspect that much more as a consequence. Finally on the list is starter items. So very similar to Duel, they're getting rid of starter items as they think that they cause problems in Joust as they're more suited for conquest. And for the most part, this is a pretty good point, as items like Heroism, Warrior's Axe, and Sentinel's Gift were extremely unbalanced and felt completely different when compared to Conquest. But with this change, the stats you take for granted when buying these items, like Extra Gold, Mana and Health Sustain, and Cooldown, are no longer going to be applied at the beginning of the game, even accounting for the small changes they made to Blue Buff, for example. And when accounting for late game damage and utility, not being able to have an upgraded starter item is going to definitely change an incredible amount of interactions. For example, as a mage, you're no longer allowed to potentially have an extra life with alternate timeline or have crazy power with Pendulum of the Ages. As an ADC, you're no longer allowed to potentially go bluestone for extra MP5 and passive damage or Gilded Arrow for extra basic attack damage and gold. And in my opinion, the class that's going to be most affected by this is Tank where you're no longer allowed to go Heroism for a clutch shield for your team, or go Sentinel's Embrace, giving you and your team crazy protections, and finally, with Warrior's Axe, you're no longer getting that Bruiser-like feel with damage and sustain. So overall, I think this makes Joust a lot more simpler, just like Duel is now when they remove starters. But this does mean builds are going to be shifted a lot, especially early and late game, as starter items shine a lot more around these timeframes. So what do I think the new build paths will be? Well. Obviously, I think each class definitely seeks out different things, and I think it all depends on the meta at any given time. But if I were to guess, this is what I think. With the removal of Sands of Time, I think early cooldown and MP5 will be prioritized for mages, but something like an early Chronos Pendant or Spear of Desolation will definitely need to be built. Also, Book of Thought is really good at giving you mana, so this might be an early start as well. And late game power items will roughly stay the same, for example, a Rod of Tahuti and Soul Reaver. 
As far as ADCs go, I think this is probably the hardest to assume, as they're approaching a meta in Joust I don't think they've ever been exposed to. But if I had a guess, probably early stacking item like Transcendence into prot shred items like Kins and Executioner. And lastly, as far as tanks go, I think they're roughly staying the same. Building early stacking items like Gauntlet of Thebes and Prophetic Cloak, while late game building those hybrid slash damage items like Soul Reaver, Ethereal Staff, or even a Kronos Pendant for example. One item I like to add as a potential early game meta pick is Cannoneer's Caress. With its crazy new buffs, like it costing 2000 gold, with its gold passive being cut by 13 seconds, I think this item is busted, especially in Joust. And that's because the passive gives gold to allies within 80 units. And in Joust, you're always near allies, so this can give your allies a lot of gold, making it easier to get items online faster. And so this might be a meta strategy to go early game, maybe as a replacement to an item like Benevolence and Sentinel's Gift. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to see how the meta settles as there are a lot of big changes. Now to wrap everything up, there's a lot of moving pieces that are going to change Joust. But the main thing to understand is that with the removal of starter items, new introduction of tank shred effects to towers, phoenixes, and buffs, this makes all tanks inherently weaker. And this makes sense, as their patch notes suggest a change or a shift of the meta to sort of make the two tank, one DPS team comp not as strong. So with this, I assume we're going to fall back to the old 1 tank, 1 ADC, and 1 mage team comp, the traditional comp. Or at the very least, we'll make the 2 tank strat not as oppressive. But what do you guys think? Is there anything that I may have missed? Let me know if you have any suggestions in the comment section. But other than that, thank you guys for watching.